Dr. Davis, you said in your testimony, again, following up on this, is that you said that Interphone has studied people who use phones heavily for a decade, has found that where persons have used phones heavily for a decade or longer, there's evidence of significantly increased risk, literally a doubled risk of malignant brain tumors. The one researcher to have studied young people who began using cell phones as teenagers, Professor Leonard Hardell of Sweden, has found that those who started to use cell phones heavily before age 20 have four to six times more brain tumors by the time they reach their 30s. Um, can we get some documentation on that study? Um, absolutely. In fact, I want to also tell you, unfortunately, that there has been a history here that I think we need to recognize. When Professor Henry Lai and Singh developed the pioneering new technique for measuring DNA damage called the common assay that shows you a tail of DNA when it's damaged, when they developed that assay in 1994, they showed that radio frequency exposure to brain cells of the rat could be damaging in terms of the common assay. The industry response, which has been documented and is in my book as well as other places, was this. First, they went to NIH and tried to get their funding revoked. Then they went to the journal that had accepted the article for publication. Who, and who, tried, who are they? The industry working against seeing this work published. Then the same lobbyists tried to get the article unaccepted in a journal where it had been accepted. And finally, they hired other scientists to do advocacy research to try to invalidate the science. And when those scientists actually confirmed the work, it was never published. What is the strongest evidence you have that exposure to a cell phone causes cancer? The work that's been done on the comet assay that shows double strand breaks in DNA after exposure to cell phone radiation is very strong evidence experimentally. If we tie that with the human studies of Dr. Sudetsky and others that have looked at people who have 10 years of exposure or more, we put that together and we have strong evidence. Uh.